Hello, uh, my name is Viktor Rapetsky. I'm the tech lead of Android Games team in London. I'm introducing the new Memory Advice API. The new Memory Advice API is part of Android Game Development Kit. To remind you, a GDK is the set of tools and libraries that provides integrated workflows, C and C++ game-related libraries for Android, and performance optimization tools. When Android runs out of memory, low memory killer daemon kills up to keep the system alive. From user perspective, it is frustrating when a game is killed by LMK. From developer's view, it's even hard to tell if this is the reason of a crash. Existing APIs, such as on low memory, are less useful for predicting low memory kills for native apps. Android platform has many other system level signals in PROC virtual file system, for example, PROC meminfo, but the signals are hard to interpret. Moreover, these signals can be different for different devices and different Android versions. The new Memory Advice API provides a solution for this problem based on ML model that analyzes system signals. It gives traffic light style signal. Green means the app can keep allocating memory. Amber means that the app should stop allocating memory. Red means the app should deallocate memory. The signal is available as a callback and as a direct call. The API can be also used for data collection. And the collected data can be used for analyzing memory usage patterns and adjusting allocation strategy. What are the advantages of the API? It shows better accuracy for predicting LMK than on trim memory API for native apps. It works across different devices and Android versions. It has simple Java and C++ interfaces. This code shows how the API can be used. First, we initialize it using JNI environment and activity. Then we set up a callback function to be called regularly. The callback function handles different cases of the memory status. You can see here state OK. The green light means we can keep allocating. State approaching limit, umbra light, means we should stop allocating. And state critical, red light, means we should try to deallocate memory. Please use this link to try the new Memory Advice API and check other AGDK libraries. I'm handing over to Bill to describe how to diagnose low memory problems. Thanks, Victor, for that great description of the Memory Advice API. I'm Bill Bilodeau, a developer relations engineer working with Android games. In this part of the talk, I'll describe how to diagnose and prevent low memory problems using tools and APIs like the new Memory Advice API. When faced with low memory problems, it helps to understand how Android manages memory. Android wants to use all of the memory since free memory is wasted space. Memory not used by the game or the system can be used for storing apps in the background. If your game needs more memory, Android will use the Low Memory Killer, or LMK, to free memory on behalf of your game by killing the background apps. However, if the game tries to allocate too much memory, the low memory killer may need to kill the game in order to leave space for the system. It's not always obvious that a game stopped running because of a low memory kill. LMKs don't show up as crashes because they aren't actually a crash. The system is intentionally terminating the process to save memory. This means you won't see them as crashes in the Play Console vitals or in tools like Crashlytics. One way you can tell for sure is to call application exit info get reason. This was introduced in Android 11. If LMK terminated the process, then it will return reason low memory. For earlier versions of Android, you'll need to reproduce the LMK and use the ADB command bug report to get a log file from the device which shows the LMK activity. The Memory Advice API will warn the game when memory is getting low. If the game can reduce enough memory in response to this, an LMK could be avoided. However, in many cases, reducing a significant amount of memory isn't possible for the game to do. Another approach is to collect field data about memory usage, which can be sent to the game's backend server and used for setting a memory budget for future versions of the game. When the Memory Advice API returns critical, you can save the amount of memory the game is using to identify a high watermark. Additionally, 
use the application exit info to see if the game has been getting killed by the low memory killer to determine how severe the situation is. Once you've determined that your game needs to reduce memory, you need to find out where to reduce memory. The Android Studio Memory Profiler shows where malloc calls were made to allocate memory and it keeps track of where memory has been freed. So not only can you tell where most of the memory has been allocated, you can also tell where memory has been leaked. Since the Memory Profiler tracks malloc calls, games that use custom allocators will need to switch to use the system malloc and free calls. For Unity games, the system allocator command line argument can be used to force Unity to use malloc and free. Unreal has built-in support for Android Studio Memory Profiler, which allows it to track the custom allocator calls. In the demo you're about to see, I'll show how the Android Studio Memory Profiler can be used to find memory leaks. I'll be using a simple test app that allocates and frees memory, similar to how a game would allocate memory at the start of a level and free the memory at the end of the level. This is a very simple demo of how a game might do allocations. We have Android Studio connected to a Pixel 6. Let's start the test on the device using the profiler. When the test starts running, you can see performance data from different parts of the device. The memory profiler shows allocations broken down by type. Now we'll start a capture of native memory. I'll simulate the start of a level where the game will allocate memory. You can see a sharp increase in total memory, mostly from native allocations. Now I'll simulate the end of the level by freeing all of the memory that was allocated. You can see some memory remaining. Let's stop the recording and see what's going on. The table shows allocation and deallocation sizes. Notice that about 150 megabytes was allocated, but only about 123 megabytes was freed. Now we'll switch to the call stack view so we can drill down to the actual malloc calls. When we get down to the malloc calls, we can see that there were four allocate objects calls, one for A, B, C, and D. Notice that for the allocate objects D, the deallocation size is zero. This is the memory that's being leaked. I can right click on the call stack and select jump to source to see where the allocation was made. You can see the function calls malloc and returns a pointer to the memory location. Let's go up one level, select jump to source to see where this was called. Notice that this function assigns the memory location of the global pointer pmemd. We can see that free objects d should be called to free the memory but this function is never called. That is the cause of the leak. I'll add that call to the free objects function and rebuild the test. Once again, the test is started from the profiler and we can see the profiling traces. I'll click on the memory section again. Then I'll start a native recording. This time, at the simulated start of the level, I'll make repeated allocations. Now I'll click to free the memory, simulating freeing all of the memory that was allocated during the level. Once again, not all of the memory was being freed. In the table view, we can see that 272 megabytes was allocated, but only 166 megabytes was freed. Let's switch to the call stack view to drill down to see the native allocations. This time, all of the allocation functions are leaking memory. They're each allocating about 52 megabytes, but only freeing about 26 megabytes. Why is this happening? Let's right click on the calling function and select jump to source. We can see the malloc call for one of the allocate objects function. Now let's see how the allocate objects A function is called. It's used to assign the memory to the global pointer pmemA. The problem is that this gets called multiple times, and each time it overwrites the global memory pointer with new memory locations. When the free objects functions are called, they only free the most recent allocations. The previous allocations are lost and never get freed. In this demo, we showed two types of memory leaks that we were able to find in Android Studio Native Memory Profiler. 
The first type was a simple missing free call, and the second type was a more subtle lost reference to memory. Here are a few things to remember from this talk. The new Memory Advice API should be used to detect when your game is running low on memory. It's a more accurate alternative to on-trim memory and will work with older versions of Android. You should respond to signals from the Memory Advice API that indicate low memory situations. If possible, reduce the amount of memory that the game is using. For games that can't reduce enough memory while running, collect field data from devices that are having trouble with low memory. This data can later be used to adjust the game's memory budget in future releases. Finally, when you need to reduce the memory budget of a game, you can use the Android Studio Memory Profiler to see where memory is being allocated and find possible memory leaks. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this gives you some insight on diagnosing low memory problems in your games.